Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am going away and you will look for me, but you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, He is not going to kill himself, is he? Because he said, Where I am going, you cannot come. He said to them, You belong to what is below. I belong to what is above. You belong to this world, but I do not belong to this world. That is why I told you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, What I told you from the beginning, I have much to say about you in condemnation. But the one who sent me is true, and what I heard from him, I tell the world. They did not realize that he was speaking to them of the Father. So Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, <coughs> then you will realize that I am, and that I do nothing on my own, but I say only what the Father taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, because I always do what is pleasing to him. Because he spoke this way, many came to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, today's Gospel is talk about the faith, the great I Am. Twice Jesus mentioned, I am. For us maybe, if we not be careful, we just have not uh, something that is interesting. But for the Jews, for the Pharisees, must, they will interesting for this word. Because we'll remind them when Moses faced God, I am who I am. So, with penetrating clarity, Jesus taught the stubborn Pharisees that remaining of this world, refusing to believe in Christ or the Father who sent him, carries death sentence. This delineation of two worlds infinitely separated upon one's death was further clarified by Jesus in the parable of the doomed rich man who should have been kinder to the beggar Lazarus. Jesus may have the grace to believe always in your name, trusting his word. And what it take for these Pharisees whom Jesus encountered, whose faith was not yet sealed on the wrong side of the chasm, to find eternal life. Jesus plainly articulated the first step, which is 
an act of faith. Those who look upon him when he was raised up on a cross would need to accept that this. Indeed, was the Christ the only one who could claim to be the great I am? So, just like what I mentioned earlier, people will realize this is from the Torah story in the burning bush when Moses met the God. So, those of us with the benefit of sacred scripture, sacred tradition, the teaching authority of the church, must not be missed. We too must look to the cross and proclaim Christ as salvation is found in no one else. Just like what the disciple mentioned in Acts of the Apostle chapter 4. So my dear brothers and sisters, how ironic that the Pharisees jumped to the wrong conclusion, a strange conclusion, that Jesus might be taking his own life. Ironic. Because only one thing might have surprised them more. If Jesus was contemplating giving his own life. Indeed, the king of kings would ultimately give offer his life. But not he taking his own life. He gave his life. So, following in his footsteps, are others who history tell us literally laid down their life. The many, many people who laid down their life for others. Yeah, I mentioned some, for example, from the beginning, St. Stephen, or who famous from the Second World War, St. Maximilian Kolbe, also, Saint Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, she was a Jewish, and then be a Catholic, and then be a nun, and end up in the camp concentration. Also, a blessed Titus Bransma, later next month, uh, May 15, will be canonized a saint. This is also Carmelite from Dutch. Also a journalist, a professor, that he spoke against Nazi German. Also end up in a camp concentration. They let down their life for something greater. They know the truth they following footsteps of Jesus, not taking their own life, but giving their life. So giving, not taking. So my dear brothers and sisters, today, when priests and consecrated souls are counterculture people who themselves generously give offer their own life for the sake of the church. Let us pray for more laborers in the fine yard. Because until now, we still heard that in many places, there is many sheep but have no support. Lack of vocation, lack of priests, lack of uh, religious so let us pray. May God send them more laborers to work in his fine yard. Amen.